Well, welcome back into the studio. And 28 days of love. I am finishing this off. So all my pages are done. And now I just need to make covers. So I found some pieces of cardboard. And I know that my pages are six by six. Oh, that one's a little under six by six. Oh, it's six by a little, about five and three quarters. So I think I'm going to make my pages square, my covers square. I think I'm gonna make them six by six and a quarter by six and a quarter. Let's see how that looks. We're gonna try that first. So I'm gonna measure this out. Go ahead and leave that with a little bit of extra on either end. So now I'm going to do the other cover. gonna get these gessoed. And I'm gonna do both the front and the back because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing as of right now. So I'm just gonna get some gesso laid down. Now that these are gessoed and dried, I have been toying with some ideas on what I should use around the edges of these because I plan to collage or do something to the surface of this. And I remembered I had some old vintage bias tape that was kind of discolored, distressed kind of looking. And also this master board that I had made quite a while ago that might match it. So that turned out to be beautiful. And that is what I went with for the cover and the back cover. So So I've just kind of measured these and get got them marked onto the master board and then I go through cutting them out. 
So I'm just gonna use them on the front of the front cover and the front of the back cover, not on the inside panel portion. So I'm just kind of auditioning the bias tape and I'm really happy with how it's going to match even the areas of the bias tape that are old and kind of yellowing kind of actually match that yellow or excuse me that orangey kind of um, tone in there so once that's done I'm just gonna get these adhered and I'm gonna pull out my trusty E6000 to do that Here I am checking to see if I'm going to have <clears throat> any gap on the inside portion of that cover once I add the bias tape because it's a little bit larger. The covers are a little bit larger than the panels that I'm going to adhere to the inside. So my thought was I'll just take some of this and glue it around the edges so that's what you see but then it dawns on me I better check the bias tape first and um, so I'm kind of checking and notice that it does fit I don't need to cut down some of that master board and put it on the other side I can just start adhering this bias tape and so to do that I am going to use some of the beacon Fabri-Tac which I love this stuff it's great on paper as well as on using any kind of fabric or fiber. So I do the same thing for the back cover and actually I haven't made a decision of what's going to be the front and what's going to be the back yet but I do the same thing with the bias tape around the other cover and then I need to make some decisions before I adhere the 
inside pages to the covers. If I'm going to uh, use the bias tape as a tie or what I'm going to use because I probably want to adhere it into um, sandwich it between the cover itself and the inside part. So once I decided to go ahead and use a sari ribbon and sandwich it through that front cover, or the cover, um, I went ahead and adhered it initially to the inside section and then came in with a little bit stronger glue, E6000, and attached the cover to that section covering the sari ribbon to hold it in place as the wrap that would come around the full journal and tie it closed. Once in position, then I just came in with my handy dandy clothespins and clipped it until it set. Now, you can use a heat gun on E6000 and it will not fully set, but it will hold things very nicely. Just a little tip about E6000. And that is also true for Fabri-Tac. So a lot of on and off of the clothespins, but finally they're, it's all dry and you can just wrap the sari around and tie it on the left side or on the right side if you have it the other direction. Now to put the title on. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do or how I was going to handle it, but I saw this corrugated piece sitting off to the left and I was interested in possibly creating some kind of title area to go ahead, go in with this. I had purchased some numbers from um, Wow Studio that I had thought maybe I would want to use. So I did have those out and prepped and well, I had them out and ready to use in case that's the decision I decided to go with.
Now you're going to really see that this, um, I, I make some concrete decisions and then I'm fussing with it once I get it completed, what I feel is complete at that point. And then I go to stage it on the front cover and I really am struggling with it. And yeah, so you'll see how I make some changes there. So with that pencil, I am just going in and laying out where I want my words to appear. And then I'm going to come in with that gold pen. Now this gold pen is new to me. I've been wanting one to play with. It is an oil-based gold pen, but the gold on it is so metallic and shiny. And I have a link down below for that pen. If you haven't had the opportunity to play with Seth Apter's Paper Artsy Stamps, these are the, um, I believe they're the EM series, Eclecta, Ele Eclectia, I think I'm saying that wrong. But anyways, this whole series of Seth Apter's stamps are incredible. I love them to add bits of texture here and there to things. And um, this one actually is new to me. I purchased it recently so it's uh it's getting its debut just using that skewer to um, I, I have a skewer set aside for laying down glues and pulling glues up so I use the flat side um, end and use that to push glue around where I want it get it all the way to the edges you've seen me use it a couple times already in this um, video but I use the pointed tip to pull glue off because I don't want that shiny bit showing through so that's what I'm doing here with that skewer All right, creative friends, here comes the point. Nina in total frustration. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna fiddle with this for a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, so after all that frustration, I just went for it. I felt like the background tag was just taking up too much space. It did nothing for the design or layout of the tag itself for the title piece. And I wanted more of that cover to show through because I thought that that was really strong. So in order to have the title complement the cover, I just ripped off that tag. In I have to admit, it was in total frustration, but I was really glad once I did, because once I saw it, I was like, yes, you know, an aha moment. 